Newton's three laws of motion are those physical laws which help in establishing the major concepts of physics. In this video, we will be discussing the basics of these laws. Newton's first law explains the concept of inertia. Now to understand this, let's take the example of this ball. Now the ball sitting at point A will remain at rest unless an external force is applied to it. Now as soon as the stick hits the ball, the ball starts moving and as there is no opposing force, it will keep moving with a constant or uniform velocity until an external force will be applied to it. This property of objects to retain their state of either rest or uniform motion in a straight line is called inertia and that is exactly what first law of motion is all about. Note that to fully obey the first law, the objects have to be in the inertial frame of reference, which means that there shouldn't be any friction force or any other net forces involved, which means the sum of all other forces should be zero. So the first law states that every object retains its state of rest or uniform motion in a straight line in an inertial frame of reference unless an external force is applied to it. Newton's second law of motion states that when an external force is applied on an object, acceleration is produced. This acceleration is directly proportional to the applied force and inversely proportional to the mass of the object and from this we get the formula to calculate the external force which is equal to mass times acceleration. Let's look at the same example. So when the external force is applied to the ball and let's say that the velocity of the ball when it reached at point B was 12 meter per second. As we all know that acceleration is equal to change in velocity over change in time and let's say the ball took 2 seconds to reach at point B. So in this case, the change in velocity will be velocity at point B, which is 12 meter per second minus velocity at point A, which is 0, and change in time will be time at point B minus time at point A. So the acceleration from point A to B will be 6 meter per second squared, and the given mass of the ball is 0.5 kg. So with this information, we can easily determine the value of external force applied by using the stick, which will be 3 kilogram meter per second squared or 3 newtons. Now in real life situation we cannot achieve an ideal situation of inertial frame of reference which means there will always be friction forces. So let's say after one second at point C its velocity was 10 meter per second. So from point B to C the ball has decelerated and this acceleration will be velocity at point C minus velocity at point B which will be equal to minus 2 meter per second squared. The minus sign shows that the acceleration was decreasing or the ball was decelerating. Now if we multiply this acceleration with the mass of the ball, we will get the value of a force which will be minus 1 newton. As the minus sign shows, this force will be opposing or frictional force which caused the deceleration. Newton's second law of motion also helped us to relate the concept of momentum with the applied force and according to which the applied force will be equal to change in momentum over change in time. As we know that momentum of an object is equal to its mass times its velocity and as the mass is always constant, so the force will be equal to mass times change in velocity divided by change in time. And as the change in velocity over change in time is equal to acceleration, this equation of change in momentum is a clear representation of equation of force we obtained from second law of motion. Newton's third law of motion states that for every action there is an equal and opposite reaction, which means every action will tend to cause a reaction of equal magnitude but in opposite direction. It is the same principle on which the aircraft engines and propellers work, where the air is pushed out with force from the nozzle and as a reaction, the aircraft moves forward. You can also check out our video on aircraft engine to further understand this process. The third law of motion also validates the concept of law of conservation of momentum, which states that the momentum of the system before collision will be equal to the momentum of the system after collision. So when the ball moves forward, passing point B and C, where we observe deceleration, the ball hits the surface right after point D, and as a reaction, it rebounds and moves back towards point A. In order to calculate the impact force, we will need to recall the concept of energy and work. So impact force is basically considered as the result of conversion of kinetic energy into the work done. In this case, we will assume the kinetic energy is fully converted into the work. So the value of kinetic energy will be equal to the value of work done, which is collision at the end. This force will be the impact force. So the equation will look like this. We know the value of mass, which is 0.5 kg, 
velocity at point D just before collision is 6 meter per second and let's say that the duration of impact was 0.8 seconds. With this information we can easily calculate the impact force which will be equal to 1.88 Newton. This impact force will be the action and as a reaction the ball will rebound with the same force of 1.88 Newton but in opposite direction. And also just before collision, the momentum of the ball will be mass times velocity at point D, which will be equal to 3 kg per second. So according to the law of conservation of momentum, the momentum of the ball after collision will be the same, which is 3 kg per second. We will be discussing about the concept of momentum and inertia in more details in our next video. We will also be making another video to discuss about impact force and impulse. So subscribe to the channel and don't miss any old set video.